It is the new year, and I don't know what all you have on your list of goals, but there's one thing for sure that you need to do this year, and that is make sure you are getting in God's word more. And so because it is so important, I'm going to share some tips with you today to make sure you know how this can happen. All right, so join me right after this. Hey sis, welcome to Goodbye Heartbreak, Hello Healing. Are you hurt and confused after a recent breakup? Are you having thoughts like, I can't believe I'm here again. Why wasn't I enough for him? Or I'm never going to get married. Do you find yourself Googling how to get past the breakup or how to heal my broken heart? Do you start your morning feeling like you can finally breathe again only to fall apart when you see a picture of your ex on social media? Hey sis, I'm Candace. I too was a single Christian woman who was heartbroken but still desired marriage. I too had numerous failed relationships and wished the right man would come along. I wanted closure from past relationships, healing for my heart, and I wanted to feel joy in my life again. But the truth is, I had no idea where to start or how to make any of this happen until I found the secret, partnering with God to heal from heartbreak. In this podcast, you will find tips for moving on after breakups growing your relationship with God and preparing for future relationships so that you will heal your heart and be ready to move forward into the life you desire. So turn off those heartbreak songs and turn me up in those earbuds. It's time to heal, sis. Hey, sis. Happy New Year and welcome back for another episode of Goodbye Heartbreak, Hello Healing. I'm so happy that you are hanging in there with me. And if you are new here, welcome. I'm so excited to have you. Um, And just in case you are new here or you've been rocking with me for a little while and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, hit the subscribe button wherever you are listening. And also, sis, if you have not left your five-star written review yet, go ahead, start your new year off right and leave your girl a review, all right? And also, sis, tomorrow is the absolute last day for you to get your 24% off of my book. It is not too late to get your devotional for this year. I wanna make sure that you are spending time in God's word every day, and this is an awesome way to do it. So go ahead to CandaceABetties.com forward slash shop, get your copy of my book, use the coupon code NEW24 at checkout and get your 24% off. So speaking of spending time in God's word, that's what I want to talk about today. I want to give you some tips to do this because you have goals for 2024. I'm sure of it, right? There's some things that you want to see happen this year, but you're not sure exactly how to make sure they happen, right? Well, one thing that you can do or one thing you absolutely need to do is to make sure that you are getting guidance from the Lord himself, okay? You need the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you in all that you do this year if you wanna see real good success. So the best way to do this is to make sure you're spending time in God's word. This is how you learn the way that God wants you to live. It's the way that you learn his voice, hearing his voice, so you'll know what it sounds like, right? Because God himself is the word. If you read in John chapter one, it will tell you that. John chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So God and his word are one. So when you read the word, you are hearing directly from him. Those words and God are one in the same. So if you want more of him and you want to know how he operates, you want to know the promises he has for you, you want to know what he thinks about you and what he has for you, you have to go directly to his word. So I have five tips for you today to make sure that you are incorporating God's word into your life every day this year. So let's dig in. Number one, schedule it into your day, sis. Go ahead and make sure if you are someone who struggles to get in that word, go ahead and schedule it in because you might be like, I'll read it later. I'll read it later. I'll read it later. And later never comes. So if you have a time of the day where you know that you can set aside 10 or 15 minutes or more than that, if you want to, you can go ahead and do that so that you make sure that you are reading his word every single day. That is the best thing to do to make sure it happens. Tip number two, start small and gradually increase. 
So here's the thing that people do sometimes that makes it overwhelming and makes you quit, <laughs> okay? It, they start too big. They're like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and read the whole Bible. Or you know what? I'm starting off now, but I'm gonna read a chapter a day. That may be too much in the beginning. So what you need to do is start small. I know people who start with the verse of the day on the like version app or whatever. Go ahead, and if that is where you need to start, go ahead and start there. But start somewhere and start small. You don't want to get discouraged because you're like, "Oh, I said I was going to read a chapter, but I don't have a, t- I don't have time to read a whole chapter today, so I'm just not going to read." So that's not the that's, that shouldn't be the case. So go ahead, start small, even if you're not u- doing the verse a day. Decide, you know what? I'm going to focus on a particular book in this season. Say you want to focus on the Psalms. Find a few scriptures every day from the Psalms that you can read. Again, it doesn't have to be the whole chapter. You just want to start small. You want to start somewhere. And as you do that, your spirit will grow like an appetite for God's word. As you read it, you'll want to read it more. And so as you do that, then you can increase to more and more. That is the idea. That is the goal. But don't be ashamed of starting small. Sis, are you struggling to connect with God since your breakup? Do you want to know what God has to say about healing your broken heart? Do you need encouragement every day in this season? I know this feeling all too well. Just like you, I struggle to connect with God and find encouragement after a life-altering breakup. Because of this, I created for you the thing that I would have needed to help and encourage me back then, which is my 365-day devotional, Goodbye Heartbreak, Hello Purpose. One of my readers, Yin, is loving this devotional so much. She said, every day of your devotional was almost like God ministering to me. If you have been able to see the jottings I have had in this book each day, you have been able to see how God has been ministering and working his healing hands in me many days. I have never enjoyed daily devotion as much as I have with your devotional. Sis and bro, because I know y'all listening to, it's time to get your copy of my book. Every day, you will get a scripture from the Bible, a devotion of me sharing my experiences and what I learned, and a biblically-based affirmation. And there's no better time to buy than now. The New Year's sale is happening now until January 3rd because I want to make sure you get your copy in time for the new year. Order now and use the discount code NEW24 at checkout to get 24% off the only devotional you'll need for 2024. But get yours today because the supply is limited. Hurry over to CandiceABaddies.com forward slash shop to get your devotional so you can begin connecting with God in a fresh way as you heal your broken heart. Check the show notes for details. Now let's get back to the show. Tip number three, make your space inviting and comfortable. So sometimes you have to create almost like an ambiance, right? (laughs) I did this for a while. I had a prayer room at one time where I would go and I would spend time with God. I made it like I had a comfy chair in there. I sat next to a window where there was lots of sunlight. I had a board where I would post my prayers. Like I created a whole space for myself. It was very inviting. It was very comfortable and it made it much easier and much more comfortable to actually just sit and read the Bible, to pray, to worship. Like it was my space. So if you are that kind of person, Go ahead and do that. Create you a little small corner. You could, If you have a whole room to spare, go ahead and do that. But go ahead. You might want to light a candle. You might want to, I don't know, have music playing in the background. Whatever suits your mood. But go ahead and create a space. And then it it will be more natural for you. It would be more, uh, like I said, comfortable and inviting and where you can just sit and read and not be disturbed. Go ahead, turn your phone off or if you're not turn it off, put it on, do not disturb at least. But go ahead and create that space for yourself and then you would be more likely to go ahead and read your Bible and your scheduled time in your space. Tip number four, Choose an easy to read translations, okay? (laughs) I don't recommend that you start off with the King James Version if you are just starting to read your Bible, okay? That may be a bit much for you to handle and understand, and then it will become discouraging for you and make you wanna quit, okay? And we don't want that. So there are so many translations available 
for you to choose from these days. So go ahead and choose something that is easier to read. Now, if you are starting, just starting to read your Bible, I don't, I also don't recommend that you choose the message translation either, something like that, because it's so far from uh, like the original meanings that it also may make you miss what God is really trying to say in that moment. So go ahead and choose something in the middle when you're starting. So I recommend something like NIV, New International Version, or NLT, New Living Translation, like something like that. Even a New King James Version is a little better. It's a lot better than King James. <laughs> okay. Now, if you want to go ahead and compare the two, because I do that sometimes, I like to compare translations, you can do that too. But if you're just looking to find a translation to read that's easy to understand, but also gives you like, you know, what's really happening there, go ahead and choose something. Like I said, NIV or NLT are my two favorite versions. Um, I also like to read the amplified version because it gives just like some extra t context to God's word, but also that would give you more to read because it's, you know, it's like I said, it's added stuff. So if you're just starting, you may not want to start there, but go ahead and find the translation that resonates best with you. Um, that's easy for you to read and easy for you to understand. And then tip number five, choose a devotional that is relevant to your current season of life. Okay. So there again, just like there's so many translations out there, there are so many devotionals for you to choose from that will, you know, help you. If you just want to focus on the Bible itself, you can find a devotional for that. But if you are dealing with something in your life right now that you are praying about and you are seeking guidance for, then you should definitely choose a devotional that deals with that. And devotionals are good because they are daily. It is something that you read every day. And so it will give you that scripture. Every devotional should give you a scripture from the Bible and then it will give you the devotion itself. Okay. And so because it does that, it will allow you to have scripture every single day. And you can, it might give you one scripture, but you can start there and then you can build on that. You can read that one scripture and then maybe go to the Bible itself and read the surrounding scriptures, the scripture before it, the scripture after it to get more context of that scripture itself. And it allows you to have a starting point for your day of reading God's word. Now, of course, if you're here, you're dealing with heartbreak in this season of your life, and I have a devotional for that. I have my devotional, Goodbye Heartbreak, Hello Purpose, which is a 365 day devotional, which means it will take you through this entire year. It's really, truly the only devotional you would need. And as you grow through this season of heartbreak, right, you deal with that hurt and we focus on that for 60 whole days, just dealing with the hurt part of it. But you won't stay there because you're going to grow. You're going to heal, right? And so I take you from the hurting part to the growing part, right? Growing in God, getting to know yourself again, getting to know who you are, getting your joy and peace back, right? We talk about dating again if you want to do that. We talk about growing in wisdom. And of course, we spend a big chunk of it on purpose at the end. And so it takes you through this whole journey for one whole year. If that is something that you are looking for, again, I want to remind you that I do have the New Year's sale going on right now. You can get 24% off with the coupon code NEW24 at checkout. Just go to CandiceABettys.com forward slash shop and you can get your copy of my devotional. It'll get to you right away. <laughs> okay, I'll ship it out right away and it will get to you really quick. And so you can get started for this year. It's not too late to start, right? It'll just be a year from whenever you get it. So go ahead, get your copy. Again, it will help you to really, really stay in God's word because it will give you a scripture to read every day. And not only that, with the devotional I have, you get the scripture, you get the devotion, but you also get a declaration, which is something that you can declare and speak over your life every day, which is something that is so very important because we don't want to just consume knowledge, right? We don't want to just take it all in. We want to be able to use what we have. So getting in God's word is not just for the sake of getting in his word. Yes, we want the wisdom, we want the knowledge, but we have to be able to apply it to our lives. We have to be able to live it out. So one way that really helps that is to speak 
that word over your life, which is what I provide every single day in my devotional. Okay, so go ahead and get your copy. And that is it. Those are the five tips. So let me run them down for you one more time. Number one, schedule reading God's word into your day, every day, schedule it in. Number two, start small and then gradually increase. Number three, make your space inviting and comfortable. Number four, choose an easy to read translation. And number five, choose a devotional that is relevant to your current season of life. All right, so that's it, sis. So I hope that you take these tips and really start planning out how you are going to really fit this into your day every single day. Reading God's word is so important. If you wanna see healing, if you wanna see transformation, if you wanna see success in your life, you absolutely need to know what it looks like from God's perspective. And it's all in his word. Everything that we need to live a good, godly, holy, righteous life that is pleasing to God and that is fulfilling to us, we can find it in his word. It is our roadmap. It is our direction. It is everything that we need to live this life here on this earth. So I hope that this was helpful to you. And also don't forget to come join us over in the Facebook group. We have some great conversations over there. You can connect with some sisters and get some extra added encouragement in our community. All right. So I love you so much. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye sis. Hey sis, listen, if you have been blessed, changed, or inspired by this podcast in any way, please subscribe to the podcast and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. This is the number one way that you can thank me and show support for the show. Also, if this podcast blessed you, don't keep it to yourself. Do a quick share and bless someone else. Please know I am so grateful for each and every one of you, and I would love to hear from you. Come connect with me and other like-minded individuals in my Facebook group called Christian Women Overcoming Heartbreak and Finding Purpose. I can't wait to meet you back here really soon. Until then, remember to love the life you have while you're making it better. Love you, sis.